All right, so here, let's get into it. Uh, let me pull up the specific game and the notes we have for you. So here, first, but while, while I'm doing that, um, I want you to tell me, how do you feel about edge guarding Fox specifically? And, and, and Falcon too, but more specifically Fox. Not good. I mean, so, because I see, like, your Armada punishes, I can't even get close to doing them. And I feel like, um, like, I try to do certain situations. Like, if they do the, uh, the side beats, I'm pretty good at catching those. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I'm good at, like, seeing where their far thing is going to be. But then I either always get hit by it or, like, I mistime it. And it feels like it never goes my way. Like, it's just safer mm -hmm. for me not to go out. No, yeah, and I definitely saw that uh, in the... There's only a few edge guards I'm um, releasing in these um, VODs, but uh, they do cover, I think, two of the more important things uh, with the page edge guarding, and a lot of that is uh, spacing specific. So that's going to be a good thing that we can work on, and I think that you'll be able to improve on uh, with the next Fox you play uh, before our next lesson, because uh, it, it's a pretty... Uh, the reason I like edge guard so much... Uh, is because it's very positional based and flow charty. It's it's like okay, I'm gonna place myself here. Um, they have these options, and I'm gonna cover these this cone of options right here, like these three options with this move. So here I'm pulling it up. I think yeah, I guess I, just need to, I need to learn those flow charts. Oh yeah, and I, I wrote some of the uh, some down in these notes that I'm gonna be sending you afterwards. If you also want to take notes though, uh, feel free to do that. The one I'm, I guess I'm more comfortable with is if they're like below stage and they fire Fox up, mm -hmm. I, could, I could catch that with the floating dare, or like um, if they go straight up, I could then like let go of the float and do dash attack, and like so those I feel a little better. But when like when they're really low and you're expected to like f like run off the stage with their model ones, or when they're like high, I feel like it just doesn't work out. No, I, I and I hear what you're saying. Uh, the good thing is. Peach is all about rinse and repeat edge guards, or uh, rinsing, or like repeating, or, or setting up an edge guard not to kill them, kill but them. to reset them and put them in a certain position. So you'll be able to either go down there and kill them, or grab the ledge because they're too far down now, or do something else that'll guarantee the edge guard. I'm actually working on something like that myself uh, that I can uh, tell you about. But first, let's just take a look at uh, one of these edge guards on Fountain of Dreams. So I'm pulling this up. I'm going to be streaming it into the Discord. Ready? One second. Here, don't worry about the gameplay. Let's see. Here we go. Should be screen sharing now. Okay, thank you. Okay, I don't think I missed an edge guard yet. <laughs> So this is you playing? No, this is you. Oh. This is one of the Fox games that you sent me. Yeah, so let's take a look at this first. I, this isn't the yeah. one I took the notes on, but uh, I still want to look at it. Yeah, that one I was trying to, I thought he was going to uh, land on the stage, which I was right about. So I was trying to do like the thing you do with Sheik. Where you like just do instant get up down smash? Yeah. I guess not too fast for that. Uh, well, no, actually, he's not. He's faster for sure because his up B has. I don't know why this is. Yeah, this, his up B has a lot less end lag um, than Sheik's up B. So yeah, it's gonna be faster, but you can still time it right. Um, but here, let's take a look at what happened and what state we're currently in that prevented that from happening. So you hit him with the bear. Uh, that's really good. Now he's going horizontally, so he didn't DI well. So he he can he still has his jump, so he can probably arc. Do you see my mouse when I'm a? Uh... Yes, yes. Okay, good. That. That's perfect. Um, so yeah, we're gonna see. He jumps up. Probably the right choice because he doesn't want to recover from low. The foxes, the last place they want to recover from is below, because they, that's when they have the least amount of options. Um, but here, let's see where he recovers from. Okay, so he, yeah, he up he's really far from here. Now, you could do this in another scenario and potentially edge guard the fox. Um, but the reason it's not working uh, isn't because you didn't react correctly. It's because you're actually above 100 right now. So you actually do the slow get up. So you right. see how you're still in the slow get up and you would have gotten there by now, like probably at this point, if you were a normal, um, under 100%. Yeah. 
So yeah, if you do that and you press down smash, um, unless they hold down again to get the second hit, uh, they probably would have died there. Uh, but unfortunately, okay. they get back on stage and we're fine. Now, So I should never have gone on the ledge if I was over 100? Not for not for one of these edge guards where he's so far away and above the stage, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You can do it when he's down low. Uh, you still have to time it, uh, the get up, but you have to take into account that you have a longer get up animation, so you would start it a little earlier. Uh, and then you could uh, do that repeat, but usually that, that's like a last, um, a last shot effort, I think, against guarding Fox. You can't really do this type of edge guard versus Fox like you do against Sheik, because Sheik is in a lot of lag. Uh, you can get up, you can down smash, or the better option, uh, run past them, FC, Nair to send them back off stage because they can't um, hold down and get sent back into stage. Um, but you can't do that against Fox because he almost immediately uh, is actionable. So we'll, we'll go over options that you can do. And in this case, this scenario, oh man, I don't know why this game is freaking out when I rewind. It was not doing this earlier. Final dreams. Honestly. Um, what you can do here, I think this float is good. Uh, I don't know if you're actually a little high. You might be a little high. Uh, I don't know if you did an, an instant flow. So I, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have grabbed the stage. I would have just um, stayed here and flow on this location. This is usually a good place you want to be as Peach when Fox is in this kind of position. Really, almost in any Fire Fox position, you want to be like right here. Mm -hmm. And since I he's in, I, yeah. Was that? I don't think I reacted fast enough. I think I was like trying to cover side B and then react because that's why people have said like cover side B and try to react to up B. Well, you can so actually react like... to both. Oh, okay. So, um, although here and I actually don't know the frames on Peach Dare. I'll take a look at that real quick. Um, but Peach Nair comes out on frame three, so that's a that's basically an option you can react to uh, a side you with, although instead of a reaction, it's more a, a lot has a, a, a good term for this. It's more a confirmation. Mm. Do, you, do you understand what I mean by that? Yes, yes. Uh, here, frame is Peach Dare. Yeah, the first hit comes out on frame 12 for um, Dare. So you would have to use Dare probably, not on reaction, but um, as, as a, a read, uh, we'll say. Um, but here, but the reason I say stay up here in this scenario, if they're firefoxing, uh, then they can only, then they can, then you have all the time in the world to like do an aerial. If they do side B, although in this case I'm pretty sure they're too far to side B. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's say let's say they could, let's say they were at a distance where they could perfectly side B right here on the stage or right here down the stage. What you want to do. Uh, to cover that is you want to be facing the stage uh, and standing right here. Now you can go into float if they're that far right away because um, even if they go into Firefox you can reset and uh, get ready your other options that you can cover. Um, but if they're inside B, if you're standing here or, flo or floating here, uh, you can react to a side B onto stage or, and I think you can actually react because they have to dip down to the ledge uh, to get here. You can actually dare the ledge right here. Now the spacing is very tight and I'll show you actually later on where you missed it, this, you, you, you misspaced it for a Firefox, but it's gonna be generally the same um, position for either or. Does, does that make sense or did I go like, yeah. did I throw too much at you, you think? That makes sense. Okay, okay. And we'll move on. And we might take a look at some uh, higher level footage to get an idea of uh, what they do. I think I just want to see this next edge guard, yeah. I don't know if it's this one. I thought I wrote it down the times for this, but I guess I did not. Something to do for next time. Oh, here, this this is the one, okay, okay. Okay, so you get the fair, and uh, he firefoxes right here. Now, this is too far for you to go out and uh, hit him. So I think you're in a good position right now to cover the firefox, or really as well as you can cover it right now. Um, 
Now, what do you think uh, you can do in this position as Peach? What what can you cover? Mm -hmm. If he comes into me, I could catch that with a fair. Mm -hmm. If he goes above, I can then, as long as it's not too far up where he can land on plat, I could catch him coming down with an up air or a nair. Um, but yeah, if he covers high, if he gets high enough, it hits on plat. I'd have a hard time covering that. Mm -hmm. So, um, Fox has multiple options here. Really, as Peach in the scenario, this is not a good position for Peach. Uh, well, compared to some of her other edge guards, um, but you do have some options here. Uh, like you said, you could um, fair him from where you are right now if you're reading him coming in. You could also go out there in fair if you think uh, they're going to go to the ledge, which is an option in this scenario. I think you do a downward angled up B like in this kind of zone right here. It is a pretty good angle. Some people call it the box angle because it's really easy to do it there. Um, but you can go out here, and if you fair like right here, her arm, her arm kind of goes like this. So you'd have to start it basically as you're going out. Um, and it would cover, this part would cover Fox going down. That's pretty hard to cover though, and that's why Foxes generally really like to go up to the ledge right here, if they can hit that angle. Now, if he goes up here, you basically can't really commit to any one of those other options, uh, because, or if you do, it's, you're, you're probably not gonna punish it by the time he lands on here, because he can almost instantly shield. Uh, there's like very little end lag to his up B landing. So you basically have to ground yourself and um, punish this with like a rising up air as he's like, like you'd have to fall back and assume that he's going to up B. Basically you falling back is going to read that he's going to stay uh, to the platform. And then yeah, you could hit it with like a rising nair, a rising up air to set up a combo. Up air probably is a really good option since he's at 54%. Uh, and then to s try and send him back off stage. Uh, here though, we do do a nair, which isn't going to cover any of those options. I don't know if that was a misinput, um, but I just I just did want to clarify that that's not going to really cover any of the options. Maybe straight to you if you're lucky, um, because a Firefox directly into you, the nair isn't going to have the be as better as good of a range as the fair, which is a, s a slight bit disjointed. So. We'll just move on. And he does duck underneath for some reason. I don't know why he did that, because you're still in flow. Here, I'll send it again. Because you're still in flow at this point, um, which at this point, I'd say when you get like right back on stage, you don't want to be in flow anymore. Like this is just a, this is just like a, this is a, a blunder basically, if you want to think of it in chess terms. There's no reason for him to come down. He can take center stage. Uh, if you're still in this float, and if he just runs off center stage here, he just like grabs you, or up smashes you, or does like something good. Uh, there's like no reason for him to drop down right here. Um, but yeah, you should just like land back a uh, shield, or like try and like get a better position so you can fight your way back into neutral. But anyway, you do hit him off, uh, so you do get that. And now he goes down low. So this is this is where Peach really likes him, and I think I don't know. Yeah, he already used his jump. You can tell because he's doing the the tuck and roll kind of thing. Oh, and also, if I'm going too fast, um, this is going to be going on YouTube, so you can look back and uh, watch it again if you want. Um, I know I kind of speak too fast. I'm trying to <laughs> work on that. But here, he's going down right here. I want now, to ask, you mentioned 54% being like a really good percent. What's special about that? That's another thing I need to work on besides like final destination. I don't know too much about like percent setups. So 54% is just a really good percent for Fox to get hit by an up air for you because it pops him up a good distance, but not too much where it's out of reach. So if you do like a rising up air on this platform, like you can do it like in a tech chase scenario. Like, oh, you up throw him on plat, he's at 54. Since it's kind of low, you can basically, um, read one of the options by doing a rising up air. Like, what I like to do, if I think they're going to tech in place, I just read that they're going to do that. So let's say I throw them, throw them up and they tech in place uh, like right there. I just, I'm already in the motion after I'm out of the throw animation of just rising with an up air right there. Now, if I think they're going to tech roll, I do something a little more advanced. Um, the, the double jump cancel on plats. I think you said you can do that, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it is a little harder in Dreamland since there are different level or heights of the platform. 
Um, but what I would do is I would up throw and I'm like, okay, they're gonna tech roll in or out. It doesn't matter which way. If I just think they're gonna tech roll, I can react to that. So I just, as, as soon as I, start, I, as I stop throwing, I basically go some, sometimes to where they're, they're gonna land uh, regardless or really anywhere on the platform. Um, as, this, as if I was going to place an aerial, but I just instead do the double jump cancel and I do a, a tiny dash dance to mm. react, okay, which way they're going to go. And then I just, and I react, oh, they tech rolled in, I'm going to dash attack. And that sets up a combo if they uh, don't DI the correct way, which they're not usually expecting to. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, just got to restructure in my head a little bit, but yeah, I'll rewatch this later. Yeah, no worries. And uh, I, I can uh, help you out a little bit later. And that, that's that's more punish game, uh, which we're not really talking about right now. But I can definitely help you out with that later. I, I really like the punish game on uh, Fox as Peach. Uh, but here, the, the edge guard, though, this is a pretty good spot. I could say you might be even, you could actually even go a little further back, just like a couple pixels. Um, because right here, if you dare, you're not at risk. But the fox, but the dare hitbox barely clips this ledge, so they can't actually sweet spot to the ledge. And that's really good because that's the only thing Peach has, uh, aerial wise, that covers below the ledge. And what if you do that? That's just one option. If you do that, um, then you can hit a nair if they don't SDI out, or they'll drop down and try again. And what you can do uh, is you can you can just keep daring, which I've been doing a lot until they eventually mess up the SDI. And sometimes our moderator will do that too. Um, or, and sometimes they'll, they'll do this, they'll go down really low to try and like super sweet spot it, um, like height wise, because your dare wouldn't cover the sweet spot height wise. Um, what you can do, if you, if you do that and you just recognize the height, you can just wave dash back, grab the ledge. Um, that, is, that is a little bit difficult. That takes, I think, some time getting used to. Um, but that's, that's one really good option. And the, and the benefit of that is that they can't tech it. Another so option. Mm -hmm. If I do the dare there, does the, if they don't SCI, it's guaranteed to the because I do the dare to the nair, but sometimes they get out of it. Are you saying that when they get out of it, it's because they're they're smash di? Yeah, they're smash di. Oh, okay. I just thought it was a spacing thing. I had no idea. Uh, for Marth, it can be a spacing thing. Uh, although usually it's um an SDI thing as well for them. Like usually they'll try an SDI away, so you can like if you if you read that they're gonna SDI away, you can follow that SDI with the dare and hit them with an air. I wouldn't do that against um, Mar uh, Fox though, since he's so small uh, and you risk losing a lot more and it's hard to position yourself here uh, to reset uh, that same scenario again if you want to do that. With Marth though, he's bigger, uh, so I do sometimes follow that in. Although usually with Marth, it's a different type of edge guard, so I actually have to do a, a run up, a, start, a, a forward momentum dare to actually catch Marth while avoiding the sword. Um, but yeah. Now, here, the other, the other thing Fox can do in this scenario, the only reason Dare might not be good in this scenario is that he's actually kind of a, a good distance away from the plat. So he might actually just be able to up, this would be a, a really good angle too. So I wouldn't worry about it in this scenario uh, against this kind of Fox, but like high level, he could like potentially just hit your head and avoid your Dare basically, or making you misspace the Dare by going like at this angle. That's pretty hard so Oh, okay, how would I counter that? You would counter that by like doing a bear. Now they can tech the bear since they're by the ledge, uh, but in th that scenario, it's just kind of hard. You just kind of like have to mix up what you want to do. You could even mix up like the spacing where you start a little further back and you do a soft bear into a combo or something. But okay. I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. That's pretty, that's like really complicated uh, high level stuff at, right now. I would just focus on getting this drill edge guard and spacing correctly. Or if you do bear, like setting it up so they go down low. Mm -hmm. So here, let's take a look at what you do. So I think what you do, I think you're trying to follow out as like like as if they were SDIing, uh, but you do it preemptively. So you like you you're already in a bad situation. So mm -hmm. you I think you get I don't I don't know if you get hit by the Firefox. You probably do, um, but it wouldn't have this stair would not have covered them riding the wall. And it's not covering them doing this very good angle. It might have, might have covered that like god angle I told you about. Um, but if anything, it's probably going to trade. The reason why we want the spacing right here to be really important is because it doesn't trade. 
And 14% might seem like silly, but if you're at, if you're at like a higher percent than zero, they just get back to the ledge free if they hit you with that. Mm -hmm. They can up B and they get there before you can reset. Uh, yeah, a lot of times like the momentum just carries me farther than I usually want to be carried. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty tough. Uh, I won't I won't lie. But um, here. So yeah, they, they get back to stage, um, and you you're just gonna want to watch out for that. But here, we only have a, I, we did start a little late, so we'll we'll go until like uh, seven five. Uh, but I do want to pull up, and I'll, I'll have to screen share it with you. I do want to pull up another game, Armada versus Fox. Probably S Fat. Um, S Fat because there's a there's a good set with him at Big House Five. I have uh, a pretty Oop, God, no no fucking commentary. Oh dude, I'm sorry, MC. It sucks. I hate. When that happens, SEs always suck. But here, let's see. Screen share. Here we go. Let's move. Let's move the notes off the stream. So let's uh, get to an edge guard. Okay. So, yeah. Here's just a really good Armada edge guard. He hits them off stage, and as immediately as he hits them off stage, he pulls a turnip. Mm. Now he doesn't have to use this turnip in an edge guard scenario, but he knows just because how good Fox is that foxes usually want to recover high. So he's thinking in the scenario, okay, uh, Fox is probably going to use his jump. Now when Fox jumps, he usually positions him in a, in, a, in a way where he can up be two ledge to plat or straight on. Uh, to stage, because like we like we saw earlier, that that gives Fox the best opportunity um, to recover. So this is a high level. This is like I wouldn't say it's a high level edge guard, but it's a pretty uh, fundamental good edge guard that he's about to do. So he's gonna pull the turn up, and he's gonna read um, the Fox up B. Now you could say, oh, but the Fox up B is before he's even in the air. Well, he has to position himself to to get here. So he's already in dash. He really commits right here mm -hmm. because you see the jump squat animation has started. And he sees that um, S-Fat has Firefox high uh, and he's committing to, okay, I'm going to throw this turnip right where S-Fat is or right where I think he's going to Firefox. And that's going to make S-Fat go down lower. Uh, of a way Fox can beat this if they think that's what a Peach is going to do. And this, this is a pretty popular option. They could just do this double jump and then actually go up B low. And at this point, the Peach, ooh, fuck. The Peach would be already committed in the air, throwing the turn up. They wouldn't be positioned to cover a low edge guard, so it'd be easier for Fox to get back. Uh, but in this case, he throws the turn up, and he follows. This is, this is, this is like, I, I wouldn't worry about following. Honestly, I think the turn up itself is a good throw. Uh, but let's, let's just see what he does. He couldn't do. Oh, okay. He did do Nair. I was gonna ask. He yeah. Do turn up to Nair. He he does uh, a turn up to Nair. You can't really do it that fast to um, a spacey, I think, because um, they're a fast faller and they get hit in a different way. It's like this. Like it, it, against a Marth, you might be able to do that. Um, but really, I, I wouldn't worry too much about doing that. I'm actually still trying to learn how to, to completely get this. What I would do if I were you. Because you have to you have to learn the, the basics more to get to this level. Um, mm -hmm. I would, and also this is just gonna help your edge guarding in general. Um, I would do this throw, and as soon as you throw, um, fade back. Okay. And if you fade back here, so let's say you throw, you fade back here. Uh, well, if you throw here, you fade back here. You hit them with a the turn up, and now they're down here. Uh, you can react to a side B onto stage. You'd have to choose because you can't react to the ledge one, like we said. You can either choose to react or predict that they're going to um, go onto stage, and so you can set up like an FC nair on reaction. It's, it's called we call like I, I call it a confirmation. Law calls it like a something confirmation. Uh, it's it's very helpful the way he does it, where you're not like it's not a pure reaction. You're like okay, I think they're going to do it this option. You prep for it. They start to do it, and then you can react to them doing it, but you haven't committed anything yet. Uh, that's what you can do. So you can either react to a side B here, or you can just uh, you can get ready to start daring the ledge 
as soon as they're like right around here, if you think they're not gonna side be here and they're gonna try and sweet spot the ledge, you can just start doing a dare, uh, a space dare to cover that. And then you're in the dare position. They no longer have a jump. Uh, if they do SDI the dare, now they're down low and you can do that rinse and repeat that we said, or you can like do a bear um, on here. That would be pretty good. But let's get to another edge guard scenario where Armada tries and use a bear to edge guard Fox. That's, that's what I really want. <coughs> here. Interesting. So that, that that was good because there was that was literally the only option Fox could do. He could only get the ledge, so you got the ledge there. I think you know that though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see what he does here. Damn, he okay. He's just getting this turn of edge guard every single time. So that that this is kind of what I meant you should do because instead of following up on the turn up, uh, we're we're analyzing uh, Peach edge guards on Fox. So instead of like following up with the turnip, this is basically what I said you should do because really the first time we did it, it was like the right spacing. It was, it was, it was like all the pins lined in a row for Armada to go through what he did. Uh, but this is gonna be more of what you're running into. You throw the turnip, you hit it, but they're too far to follow up on. Um, and you see he like, he's already turned his back. Uh, he's already in this float because he's, he's let's, let's see if we can go back and see when he goes in the float. So he throws the turnip, it's hit. He turns around because he wants to use the bear. Oh. Or, you know, no, no, so it's not even just because he wants to use the bear, it's that, but he also is threatening float to ledge uh, and, and grabbing the ledge. So that's gonna scare Fox from just doing that. Like they could still do that. They could call Armada's bluff and say, I don't think you're gonna float to ledge. Uh, and I'm gonna side be there anyway. But he's threatening that. He's putting it into the mind of the other fox. So that's another option. Instead of daring, if you think they're going to um, side B the ledge, uh, you could just do, you could just wave dash back, or most peaches float back because it's a little easier. Oh, hey, Bender, what's up, dude? Um, you could just float back to the ledge um, because that, that's going to be input-wise easier. But if you do um, do the wave dash, if you have the space and the time to do it, you do have the floats. So that's like keeping a resource. But anyway, he he, thre he does this, so he threatens the ledge grab. But instead of doing that, he's just going to do uh, the bear. It's, it's kind of like a 50-50. It's kind of oversimplifying it, but we'll just say it's like a 50-50. And uh, the fox tries to make it ambiguous, it looks like. Because it looks like, oh, is he going for ledge or is he going for the stage? And he's really going for the... He's actually, this is kind of probably the worst option he could have chose. Yeah, because he's kind of far, so I don't know. Uh, it was kind of the worst option he could have chose. He kind of misspaced it, but even then, top players still misplace stuff, so definitely the Foxes you're going to play are going to misplace stuff. Um, but he's side being uh, Armada is reading that he's going to try and side be on the stage, so he places a bear. And he kills the Fox. And here, let's see what the other solution is. Hey, Zach. Awesome. Your lessons might be a little different than the other people because um, you're not going to be able to be talk. But uh, we're going to start your lesson at 7.05 because I started a bit late with uh, Lucas. So here, let's move this forward. Come on, Armada, kill him. Okay, let's let's see this. Yeah, he did that. Uh, yeah, this this probably okay. So, yeah, so this this is a this is actually another good example. What what, what do you do when Fox is uh, this height? So, Fox has multiple options, right? Fox mm. can go to ledge. Um, Fox could do like an angle down here. Uh, probably won't be doing that though. That's a pretty hard angle to hit, and um. We could go straight to the platform. Now, what Armada is doing here, since Fox is this distance, unlike remember when we looked at your Fox uh, on FOD on the left side, how he was like pretty close with Firefox. Mm -hmm. 
Well, because he's that close, you can't really react to him going to the top plat or cover at least all while covering other options at least. You had to make make kind of like a read there. With this spacing, since Fox is pretty far away, and and uh, Dreamland Plat is out of his reach barely, you can cover multiple choices. So what Armada, or at least threaten multiple options. So what Armada is doing is he's threatening to just move right and throw out a bear to cover Fox going down. Um, but he's not actually doing it yet. So that's why this float in this position, right on the edge of the stage, but not being any uh, part off of it, is really good. Because you're just threatening something by being there. Uh, but he can also read, if he goes here, he just has to cancel his float, land, like fastball land, and then do a jump bear. Or a jump, yeah, probably a jump bear, because that's going to be more disjointed than an air. So yeah, he... He does exactly what I say. He, um, he even takes a step back after landing. So he can like come at Fox more as opposed to rising into Fox. Just to like protect him from the Firefox. But I think you, you get the basic concept though, I think, right? About mm -hmm. threatening. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Awesome. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I know you meant by he went farther to get the bear. But how come he couldn't just go for a nair? So, like, I guess that's, like, another crutch. I use nair more often mm -hmm. than I should in situations like here. I would probably have done a nair. More like, bear is obviously the better option. But how come nair is not a good option in this situation? Uh, I, I would say nair is not... I'm not saying it wouldn't work. It could probably mm. work. Um, but that's... You probably don't want to challenge... Um, here. You probably don't want to challenge Firefox directly... Uh, with a nair, so Armada is probably doing a bear because he he's just doing it in case the Firefox is still active and the back air is a little more disjointed. Gotcha. And here, let me just. Yeah, because if he did a nair into this right now, he would probably trade because you know how uh, nair you put your arms like upwards left and downwards right. If he approaches with a nair, those hitboxes, neither one of those is facing, is, is really it's Peach's head that would hit Fox first as opposed to those arms. So I could see that you running away uh, nair, but if you're going to do that, you might as well do bear since it's more disjointed. Uh, it's just going to be safer overall. Uh, he's at a percent where I, I, I just think bear is just the safer and just the smarter move overall in the scenario. And like I said, facing away from the ledge uh, just allows you to threaten or like just yeah threaten Fox that oh I'm gonna grab the ledge. You think I won't? And uh, yeah. So against fire foxes, you would say always use bear or fair, not nair. Yeah, I would only nair if you literally have like no choice, and it's like yeah I I I, I never use nair against fire fox. Okay, cool. So I only use nair if I'm like blocking a side B. Uh, yeah, side B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's um, that's pretty good uh, for today. I would just, what I have homework for you, I would just focus on positioning yourself in these good scenarios um, to edge guard and, and think about, okay, how far are they? What can I react to? What can I threaten? And just explore those options. Even if like you're not sure if it's gonna work at all, just like, just um, sometimes grab the ledge. Sometimes uh, do a bear. Sometimes I like, cover their... Firefox to the platform with like a read bear, uh, stuff like that. And if you have any questions, I'm, I'm always down to help you out during the week because I know I'm kind of throwing a lot at you. I am going to give you some notes I have that uh, are a written way of showing you what I'm talking about too as well. I also threw in some a note about a dash attack in there I saw at the beginning of one of your sets. If you want to ask about me about that later, I can definitely help you out with that. Um, but yeah, just, uh, what was that? Yeah, I know. I said thank you. No, man. Uh, yeah. it's, it's my pleasure. Um, I'm always down to help you out with this. I love, I just love Peach stuff. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm definitely going to practice like doing the, the, I like, you know, taking the turn up out to where the Firefox is throwing that. Mm -hmm. I got to practice. I got to do that more. Yes. And, oh, and one last thing. I would just worry. I would just uh, try not to, if they're too close, like in that mm -hmm. FOD situation. In this situation, it's fine because of how far Fox was. But in the FOD situation, I would um, think about not telegraphing my edge guard too easy, easily. Like if you float in that FOD position that you were at earlier, 
you're basically telling the fox, I'm probably not going to be covering up here because I'm already committing to float. It's going to take me some time to fastball, get to that up to that platform. So just think about like, am I telegraphing this edge guard at all too much? How can I not do that? Or yeah. But could you also say that that telegraph is like, can work as a bait? Yeah, it, it definitely can. Um, and I think that's why, that, that's basically what Armada is doing. That's what he's threatening right here. He's threatening, oh, like I'm gonna, um, I'm going to threaten, I'm gonna grab the ledge. Like, dude, like, look, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm right about to grab the ledge. Or I'm gonna come out with a bear, right? You don't wanna go that way. That's basically what he's doing. That's what the threat mm. is. But he has the ability to do that threat because he can react better because Fox is farther away. Unlike that FOD mm. situation. Gotcha. Awesome. So I got to get uh, ready with the next student. It's going to be Zach. Uh, so I'm going to help him out. Uh, but yeah, dude, it's been uh, fun. If you have any questions, just shoot me a message or something. And also need the notes uh, after all the lessons are done. Okay. All right. Peace out, man. All right. Peace out, dude. Thanks.